In this video, we watch how you can use the debugger to detect errors in scripts that contain functions. We've already completed the split and roller exercise from series 5. The first function, distort word, takes a word as its argument and returns a distorted version of this word. The first and the last letters of the word retain their original values, while all the middle letters are a random permutation of the middle letters of the original word. We switch to PyCharm and test this function first. We've already added the sample data from the donor as a doc string and at the bottom of this program added a code which ensures that the doc string is being executed. In solving this problem, we use the random function, because we should take a random permutation of the letters. The result obtained by our, our code may deviate from the result shown in the doc string, but we can follow the different steps when tracking any errors. We right-click in the function distort word and run this doc test. The tests keep on running. Presumably we have come to an endless loop. We stop the doc test and analyze the problem. To do this, we use the debugger. We put a breakpoint at the start of the function and choose debug doc test this sort word in the context menu. The first example of the doc string will be tested. We will now follow the function distort word step by step. When debugging scripts with function calls, you have several options to go through the code. Step over means the next line of code in the current method is executed. If this is a function call, only the result of this function is shown. Step into, or F7, if the next line of code is a function call, then the debugger steps into the method called at the current execution point. So the instructions in this function can now also be executed step by step during the debugging. Step out or shift F8, the debugger steps out of the current method to the line executed right after it. If you only want to execute a function code when the code involves a piece of text written by you, you can choose step into my code so you skip stepping into library sources and focus on your own code. The resume button or F9, this button will resume program execution and proceed to the next breakpoint. We click the step into button and for every step you take in the debug process, you can now examine the values of the objects of your program in the variables window and in the editor. We notice that the string s does not change, so it does not ever become an empty string. This explains why we are in an infinite loop. We finish the debugging and examine the code in detail. When we put together the new string s, we don't remove any characters. However, in the new string s, we must remove the letter on position pass and can only start the second part of s on position pass plus one. We correct the error and run again. The method distort word is now executed for the two examples from the doc string and yields a correct result. By using random letters, the solution obtained is not entirely identical to the example solution, but the middle letters have been switched. We now add the second function, distort sentence, and test it. This function takes a sentence as its argument and must distort all the words in a given sentence using the function distort word and return this distorted sentence as a result. All characters that do not represent a letter must remain unchanged and should retain their original position in the distorted sentence. We now run the doc test distort sentence and get an error message. 
string index out of range in all of the three examples. To detect the error here, we will also use the debugger for this function. We insert a second breakpoint at the function distort sentence and another one on the line where the function distort word is called. We right click in this function and choose the debug doctest distort sentence. We now follow the process with F9. By using this button, the execution skips to the next breakpoint each time. We get an error in words of length 1. The letter is returned twice. To check what goes wrong, we debug again and skip with F9 to the word I with step into my code. We jump into the code of the method distort word. The variable s is formed by omitting the first and the last characters of the entered word i. This results in the string index out of range error. And in addition, the variable s is now empty and the while loop is not executed. And what is being returned? The program takes the first character of the word, the i, adds the string p, however, the string p is empty. It adds the last character of the word, the letter i, and returns this result. So what is returned is a double i. By pressing step out, we step out of the current method this dot word and return to this sort sentence to the line executed right after it. In this function, we now add the result of this dot word to the string distorted and the double i is added to the distorted sentence. So the function distort word returns an incorrect result in case of words with length of one character. Even in the case of two or three letter words, there is no permutation of letters and we can return the original word. We add this condition to the function distort word to bypass the error in one letter words and we also avoid two and three letter words being run through the code unnecessarily. In this video, we have used the following debug buttons to detect errors in the code. Resume or F9 to skip to a next breakpoint. Step over or F8 allows you to skip a next instruction. If the next instruction is a functional method call, then it will only be performed. The debugger does not step into the method called at the current execution point, but only returns the result of it. Step into and step into my code skips to the next instruction. If this is a function or method call, you will enter the associated method. And with the step out button, the debugger steps out of the current method and skips to the next line that will be performed after the current method is abandoned. By using these function keys, we can follow the execution of the code step by step track the value of the objects and detect errors. This is the end of this video in which we learned to debug in detail by using docstrings and a doctest module.